Welcome back to Squawking Dead. It's taken us a little while to find our feet knowing that Nick is ultimately killed off in the series, but there's an interesting opportunity now to give his death far greater meaning in the form of these time jumps. Even in the present, it definitely lends an opportunity for Morgan to bond with our group in a way they might not have been able to had Nick remained alive. And it definitely adds a tremendous amount of weight to what we eventually find out is the fall of the baseball stadium they've been living out of in the past. Where in the first few episodes of the season, there seem to be little to no connection between the group's past and present, we're now starting to see connective tissue that helps us to better understand why they're in this KG zero fucks left to give state. And they are presenting in the most heartbreaking way. It's as if they're in the, the most personal of hells. I mean, Luciana is challenged yet again with a Nick that would rather stick together and hunker down with his family than run away with her. Strand is choosing to sacrifice his bug out plan to give his family an extra day's provisions. And Alicia, knowing full well that she's capable of surviving out there in the wild, is in lockstep with her mother and even convinces Naomi to find a purpose within the stadium walls rather than readily give up and allow her to move on. And yet, knowing that giving in to their old habits might have been the best thing to do at the time is the ultimate of mindfucks. So, whenever my mind takes too many dead ends, I simply have to take the easy way out and turn it over to the relish on my weenies, <laughs> the maple syrup on my cattle pie, and the, bl- and the blue bonnet on my resting place. Carol. I'm glad you just didn't compare me to the, what was it, the cat food patty? <laughs> <laughs> I would well, no, you're the maple syrup. I'm the maple syrup. Okay. On my right. cattle patty. Okay. All right. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little afraid. Okay. I'm just full disclosure. I was a little afraid. I, I, I and this is why I put it first of saying of the, of the relish on my weenies thing. <laughs> To distract from everything else. You know, we're almost 40, but we have minds of 14-year-olds. I know. So, yeah, so I just kind of, like, rushed through it. So, like, oh, I hope she doesn't notice this. (laughs) (laughs) I'm super mature. She's the diced pickles on my my sausage case. My sausage casing. (laughs) Super mature. We're really mature. We're almost 40. Who's we? I wrote this. (laughs) I know. I know you did. You take all the credit. But I I encourage it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's not like as if you're sending me an inst- like a messenger say like hey listen uh, passive aggressively yeah, exactly <laughs> could you like not do these sexual things in the interest i'm like what sexual things i'm like it's funny it's a joke <laughs> oh, oh yeah. that yeah oh whoa yeah i don't know if that's gonna go over well <laughs> it's called humor folks it's yeah. funny yeah just tap in I, ooh, tap in maybe sense of humor don't use the word tap <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Let me pull up my notes. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. So like I was saying, yeah, yeah, it's, I'm turning this over to you. So give me your give me your impressions. Give me your, your, your feelings right off the bat. Well, I like the fact how we're kind of just keeping the pace on this. You know, we're continuing where we left off in the last episode. And I like how we keep going with these flashbacks to kind of understand wh- how we got to where we are. Like we still have a lot of holes that we need to figure out, obviously. But I like the fact that we were getting... Getting everything through the eyes of these kind of video testimonies, if you will. Yeah, from, in a way, right. Yeah, from each of these, not all the characters, obviously, but from Stran, from Luciana, from Alicia, just in terms of their individual experiences and just the events leading up to, like you said, we assume like the fall of the stadium. I mean, right. it seems like that is what happened. And we're getting closer to understanding when exactly that happened, how that happened, what were the circumstances and the particulars to what happened. It's interesting to just understand where they were leading up to that. I'm very curious. I'm all in. I, I think the twist at the end with Naomi, Laura, you know. Naomi slash Laura. Naomi slash Laura, whoever she is. The connection to John Dory. I thought that was really cool and interesting. And I'm excited to see that backstory. But yeah, I, I thought it was good. It definitely had me riveted. I thought there was some really cool walker scenes. The water park landscape I oh, thought was yeah. great. I thought yeah. that was really fun. Really fun background that... I don't think we've really seen before. And I I just, it was like an amusement park of terrors kind of, you know, sort of, (laughs) you know what I mean? For some people, I think a water park is already filled with frights. Yeah, for me. Like bacteria or whatever. Yeah, no, for me. Like those tubes, I get claustrophobic. No, I won't go on them. Oh, wow. I (laughs) I love this. See, Mio, I love this stuff. I like, I love amusement park rides. I love 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 water parks. I love amusement parks, but water parks, I can go on certain rides. Those tubes, I get freaked out. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I, Mm -hmm. I can see why you'd say that. I mean, like, let's... uh, 
imagine for a sec that you're not going down them fast enough. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah. guys, guys, hello? Guys, oh, hello? Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm getting nervous just even thinking about that. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever heard of anybody getting stuck in one of those things? That ever? Simpsons episode. Remember? Oh, Home God. Cups. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I know, I know. It's, it's a cartoon, <laughs> but you, again, we're mature, or I'm mature. But sure, <laughs> sure, sure, sure we are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> But yeah, I, I see what you mean. I feel like slowly we're mm-hmm. starting to see the, the differences in color. Okay, so I yes, mentioned- Yes, I like that. I do like the, the fact that they're using the different tones. I noticed that also just in terms of what the now, you have this sort of grayish, sort of bleak, sort of kind of tones with only maybe certain pops of color with the blue bonnet. Right, flowers, right. Basically, it just kind of punctuates it. And then when we go back to the before, it's almost kind of like a yellow tint sort like of- warmer. Uh, mm-hmm. Right. But what I'm noticing- Noticing now in this episode is that the scenes from the past are getting a little less warmer. Yeah, that's good. That's a I true. don't know about the point. No, yeah. that's a good point. Now the present actually, when we flash to the present, so far that's all been in the dark. Yes. Yeah. yeah so I don't have a sense of color right now, mm-hmm. and I think that maybe it may have been purposeful. Like that whole episode being done in the dark in the present may mm-hmm. indicate like a mournful, like night has fallen right. sort uh-huh. of feeling, mm-hmm. uh, uh, along with the fact that it just happens to be nighttime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we start out out with uh, viewing things in the past fr- through Althea's lens, you know, right. taking down Walker Ennis, mm-hmm. covering Nick up and, and, mm-hmm. and all that stuff. It, actually, a very interesting scene that I hadn't noticed before. <laughs> for some reason, Luciana actually uh, she was the Nick one. out. Yeah. yeah, she was the one who basically put him down. Yeah, before yeah. he could turn. Yeah, but other than that, these were rest- retrospective shots. Mm-hmm. W- when we're actually in the present, we're actually in the dark, in the van or out of the van, but it's, it's at nighttime. So mm-hmm. I just thought that was very interesting. Not only it was the color washed out in the last episode in the present, but now we're in, in a setting where, in a sense, there's an absence of color. Yes. You know what I mean? There's this is nighttime. So mm-hmm. we're relying on the cones, not the rods and the ah, eyeball. Ah, yes. Anyway, so, but yes, but the past sequences, are, now it's, it's starting to get a little less warm in color. Yeah, you know, no, as, I see as, your point. As the episode yeah. goes on. So I love what they're doing here. They're paying really close I, attention to cinematic I, detail and storyline detail. Are. I think so too. And even in terms of the opening, because <laughs> yes. you know, obviously from my perspective, I went into it with a certain expectation because I was not a diehard fear watcher. When the season started, I was already kind of preparing myself for the intro and the music from what I knew of fear. And I feel like pressing com- a sample button right now and going and just playing it right now. <laughs> Like that. very nine inch nails kind yeah. of you know like that sort of you know yeah but it's completely different and the fact that every beginning scene is in reference to what happens in the episode I yeah. thought was very interesting yeah and definitely I noticed like with this episode I was already kind of waiting for it so I was trying to kind of see like oh what is it and then I kind of noticed like because at first I thought like oh is my what's wrong with my connection or whatever and I was like oh no it's, <laughs> it's my cable it's, it's my cable it's company's right. connection yeah and then I was like oh no, no, because it's all videotape because this is all kind of like a retrospective from the video testimony. So I was like, okay, all right, I get oh, it. Oh, yeah. And, and also it's in, uh, it's not in letterbox. It's uh, it's in pan and scan mode. So it's in four by three rather than mm-hmm. full, than widescreen too. So yeah. did you notice that? Yeah. I, yeah. It, w- it took me a, a little bit. I was like, what's, and I was like, ah, oh, yeah. Okay. I see what you're doing. Uh-huh. <laughs> We're watching this from a, from a little television. Oh, mm. I, I just sounded like Jeff Goldblum there. Uh-huh. We're watching oh, I love Jeff Goldblum. Goldblum. Yes. It's awesome. So yes, 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 yes. <laughs> 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 so, you do a pretty good job <laughs> don't worry we got more, more to come <laughs> more to come gotta hope not sorry guys well well of knowledge here yeah well so. well of of mm, mm-hmm. mm, yes yeah. yes mm. <laughs> <laughs> all the all the attention to detail when it comes to cinematography all the weaving in of plot points and and i feel like they've had to really they must have had to really think on their feet when it came to frank delane you know the guy who plays Nick. Yeah, right. So they, they, and maybe it may have given them, sure, like an opportunity to to do some crazier things with the story. But think of all the detail. I feel like yeah. the the showrunners, the writers, they're really giving you value. 
when yeah. it comes to watching the show. You know, the intros, yeah. mm-hmm. the colors, the characters, weaving in this story with the, the series regulars. It's, it's, and it's not as if they're absconding or trying to take away yeah. from the series regulars, which yeah. could have been like the op- an opportunity to do that. You know how so like sometimes some shows go a little stale? Sure. I- I'm not arguing this. Usually when that happens, they, they'll introduce new characters and yes, bring like life the to Brady the story. Bunch. But like to, but also in a way to kind of distance themselves from the current characters. Mm-hmm. I feel like the way they did this, some people are calling it a reboot, mm-hmm. but I call it more of like a refresh. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're still making the main story uh, surrounding our series regulars. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're still surrounding around the Clark family business and uh, of staying alive and stuff like that. But they're just adding these other characters to kind of maybe widen the 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 field and 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 maybe kind of hone in the, the the real the real main arc of what's going on of survival and hope when it comes to the season. Let me ask you a question on that note. Do you because I have heard some people with these thoughts and I don't know how you feel about it. There are some people who relish more the moments that are in the now. Because because of the new characters, I mean, Althea, like the yeah, the present mm. that has like Althea and John Dory and Morgan. Mm. And when it goes to the before, they're not as crazy about it because they're kind of really loving these new characters. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. Okay. And that's and that's kind of why I didn't want to say it was like a reboot or that, oh, these characters are a reason to watch. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest. I've been watching Fear the Walking Dead from the beginning and and every week live you know it's it's not like as if i'm catching up i was catching up or anything right i i I liked where they were going i enjoyed the paths that they were weaving there were some decisions that i'm not gonna say confused me like like the exit of cliff curtis and lorenzo henry and and some of the characters that love the ruben blades mercedes mason just the way these characters have exited it wasn't as if they confused me or anything like that because look we're not we're no strangers to people on the initial getting killed off and stuff like that the walking dead has prepared us for things like that mm-hmm. and even like the decision to 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 cut cliff curtis even that to me is like oh okay this is kind of a curveball oh you think cliff curtis was kind of like the the kind of like the the rick of the show but really it's madison and i think that there was right. a it was maybe a pointed way to kind of indicate that like hey you don't keep your eye on this don't keep your eye on that because this guy's going away right so uh, there's something to that so i i I, I really, really liked the way the show was going. I liked the way season three ended in a way because it really, really opened up the possibilities of where they could go next, and especially like the way they were teasing the next season. And we have we still haven't seen some of those scenes. Right. Uh, basically, the scenes immediately after the dam uh, exploded, uh, where Madison yeah. kind of washes up to this, um, I think this is like Mexican town. Uh, so just the fact that you add these new characters really it draws your eyes away from what what had happened from that time on right and so but in a way that kind of breathes a little bit of life into and maybe even makes those past sequences a little bit more i'd say more important Mm -hmm. like okay this is the flash in the pan stuff the present like all these new characters this is kind of you could say it's like almost a story onto itself Mm -hmm. and then just watching these two independent things somehow find tendrils that connect them these two things that you can like you can like having watched the first three seasons Right. And then you can like this new thing. Mm -hmm. And then now watch these two things suddenly find a way to connect with each other. Like, as I'm saying this, by the way, I'm (laughs) I'm like interlocking my fingers together, (laughs) (laughs) expecting you all to know what I'm doing. Like, I'm giving you the visual here. I'm giving you the visual. Yes. And so... And that's that's kind of cool, like the you know the washed out blue combining with the warm past and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I really liked the the past characters, so yeah. So it's it's kind of like that. I could see why people would say that. Of course, as I'm trolling Instagram and trying to read all the comments, comment after comment is all about oh I stopped watching midway into yeah. the first season. No, for sure, I see it all the time. It's yeah. it's a lot. It's been a real shot in the arm, you know, for the show. These new characters. It's really incited a lot of energy and a lot of. Re- renewed interest yeah um, and it kind of sh- shocks me a little bit you know to see to know that 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 how widespread that was yeah, and, but you know what the thing is it's it's what i've always said it's the characters on walking dead are caricatures and i feel these new additions are kind of caricatures in and of themselves 
you have like a cowboy gunslinger. Oh, was it the Karate Man? That the way, <laughs> the way Morgan was called. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, I I still say that Althea looks like you know Tracer from the game Overwatch. You know, I mean, it's just <laughs> there we go. Their characters are very very distinctive. Yeah. Very very distinctive they characters. They stand out, right? They they stand out. It it does definitely incite some interest. Like, oh, I wonder what his deal is. Yeah, I I think what what drew me to fear originally was the idea of family, like it, having this family stick together, even if it was. Like it's an interesting take. A broken one. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely an interesting take on it. Like a, a kind of, you know, because we always, or I always say that, you know, people love to talk with Walking Dead and, and criticize when characters do things like, like Eugene and, and say like, oh no, that's, he's, you know, he's such a coward or whatever. Like, let's be honest. Most of us in reality would be Eugene. Right. Right. And exactly. Very, very few of us would be Daryl. Like that's just the reality of the situation. But with a show like Fear following around this family, it's a lot more relatable to what would a family, how do they get by? How, how do they survive? Right. But then finding out that, that this family is not so normal. You not know? so normal, yeah. You know, the mother has a, an interesting past, like a, mm-hmm. the, the daughter is rebelling and, mm-hmm. and, and the, the son, the son has, is an addict. Yeah. Right. Who seems to use these powers in the apocalypse to this to an interesting degree. Right. Yeah. And then all these other characters like Victor Strand, like and he, that guy, it's funny like how the family is, is seemingly the most normal and then all these outside characters like even Ruben Blades. Oh, he mm-hmm. was a ex-military yeah he was yeah yeah it, it, and whoa so crazy awesome and then you know we have strand the con man so mm-hmm. i think maybe that was done purposefully it's not as if fear is agnostic in in the what in the cartoony character kind of thing but it's the family itself mm-hmm. doesn't have those characteristics right you know what i mean mm-hmm. how maybe everybody else in this world is cartoony except for these people right it's kind of like they're the normal ones sort of not sort of kind but sort of. of maybe it's maybe Maybe kind of the reason why a lot of people watch reality television, like, oh, they're normal, kind of, sort of. No, so I, watch reality. Reality. <laughs> I watch reality TV because it makes me feel light years better about my life. I, I was going to say, so. <laughs> wow, I was going to say it for you just to kind of, yeah, but you feel good about yourself. Like, oh, no, I, no, I admit it. No, I admit it. It makes me feel great about myself. I'm like, whoa, I have my shit together, Man, clearly. You, your bar is really low. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's okay. For goodness sake. For yeah. goodness sake. Yeah. I just, you know, I came from watching my uh, reality TV to, you know, signing onto this podcast. So, you know, <laughs> it's all about being a well-rounded individual. <laughs> quite, quite the jump. <laughs> well-rounded. That's what I am. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I that's what I call my body shape. It's well rounded. <laughs> Self deprecating. I could jokes. be worse. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah. The addition of these new characters definitely generating buzz. It's generating buzz, it's generating interest. But the whole show, it's it's a very much a different take. I mean, they definitely did a bit of an overhaul. You know, the, the theme, the the beginning, the merging of these kind of two separate character groups. So it's it's definitely a new take, but I'm enjoying it. You know, I, mean, I don't know how much Morgan, Naomi slash Laura, and Madison play. I am still not fully sure where they fit into the the tapestry of all this. Oh, I'm seeing Morgan fit in quite well. It, yeah, it's, I think what's really interesting is the way I'm already seeing utility in the Morgan character. Mm-hmm. It, he is he is sort of starting to kind of merge into their group. He as as much as he was fighting it when he kind of stays behind with John Dory. Yeah. It's so subtle. It, it's not like a beat you over the head sort of thing, but it's almost like he's been kind of lulled into this subtle friendship without even knowing it. Yeah, he's no. being tricked into it. Yeah, something. like, I mean, it's, just, it's way. so subtle. Like, I mean, he's been fighting it since the first moment he met this guy. And came across his group and now he's offering to stay behind and you know keep him company you know what's really odd it's it's as if john dory is it's almost like the dr jekyll and mr hyde of of morgan like, like john yeah. dory is this manifestation of you think <laughs> well i mean i'm i, I don't really know but mm-hmm. it feels as though it oh this is pure morgan this is this is what morgan mm-hmm. is when things have are peachy keen <laughs> you know mm-hmm. 
and, and right with the world. It's 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 the Morgan we would know had things not gone bad, mm-hmm. which again is what makes John Dory such an odd, odd post-apocalyptic character. Like, well, yeah, because he just don't seems see like people such, like that. No, he just seems like a pure soul, yeah, like a good soul. So it makes for a really, really good mirror darkly of of, of Morgan, and so. But then it always, but it concerns me too because I'm, I, I feel like. Okay, well, he seems like such a good soul. So maybe he's, maybe we're going to find out this is like a misery situation with him and Laura slash Naomi. You know, I know a lot of people are saying that. Oh, my yeah, God. like I don't know. Again, like I did get a little bit of that feeling. I was like, oh, really? God damn. You know, like I don't know. You know, because it just seems like too. It's too good to be true. Look, we've been, we've been tortured for too long. Yeah, we've been tortured <laughs> to for too long. I mean, like, these people just can't be good. <laughs> can't be good. It's impossible. It's like, oh, God, you know, something's got to be up. It's the same reason why I think that Madison can't be dead because it's too easy. It's too easy. Well, it's not that it's too easy. It's just that it's, oh, it makes too much sense. Like, oh, of right. course she's dead. Duh. Right. right. Yeah. And, and, I th- and I think you're right. I think there's the part of me thinks that... There's got to be more to it. Yeah. It can't be that easy. I mean, it can't th- be that conclusion because no. it's something that, oh, all the evidence you're presenting to me right now means that she's gone from, right. Nick, from Nick wanting to murder Ennis. You know, why would he want to be to do that? You know, right. it's too easy. You're right. Right. And too- even Naomi is after, and you're seeing bits of that in like sneak peeks is that right. after everything she's been through, mm-hmm. I mean, whether that's real or manufactured and that's, that's another thing. It's so, yeah, a lot of people are saying that about John Dory, uh, about, Oh, it could be like, he's kind of a psychopath. He's kind of obsessing over her. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, you could say the same things maybe about Laura slash Naomi mm-hmm. is first of all, the two names mm-hmm. right off the bat. Right. 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 And then second of all, there are just some odd things like in, in the episode, like how she knows so much about the Land Rover. Right, And right. then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. like, waves it off. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I don't know that much. Hmm. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then even her story... <sighs> So, something about the way the group meets up with Naomi. Yeah. Just the way she acts. It's not not as much the cagey squirreliness of her, but the, oh, I don't know where I, where I came from kind right. of thing. It's, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. Every, even if you've been through a lot, and even if you've moved on from, from so many places, Jenna Elfman ain't no spring chicken, no. you know? You, you knew, where you, you know you, where you grew up. You knew where right. you were when you when, when the apocalypse hit. She, she's say something. Information. She's withholding. Yeah, and that's that's what concerns me the most. As much as you could say John Dory is this or that. Okay, take for example this, and I did write this down, is that it's it's more than just that. She's been with the group for three weeks, mm-hmm. you know, while the vultures have been hanging around, and she still hasn't said much about where she's come from. Yeah. Three weeks living with the... No TV. I mean, <laughs> not many books. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're around these people for like an extended period of time, and mm-hmm. they're all in your face, and they, all you've got to do is to hang around them and you don't tell them anything about your past at all it's it's bizarre so i mean you'd figure something would come out and and, uh, like especially something oh about where you've come from yeah more than anything else bless these these the clarks's hearts you know for not pushing her got it no problem i get that i accept that yeah you know and they're very particularly sensitive to ptsd but yes clearly right but though these things are there this these little bits of evidence are there i'm more suspicious of naomi at this point than i am of john dory and i think that makes sense i mean really like naomi's given more of a reason for us to be suspicious than john dory I think that we're just, you know, just so hardened. We're so hardened and jaded that we can't yeah. imagine that it's like, wow, this man like found this woman and is sincerely just smitten with her. Yeah, you know, it's it's just so like sweet that it's like, no, no way. <laughs> yeah, like love stories like that don't exist in the apocalypse. No, it's, they don't. It's no, just very hard to believe. I, very look, hard. I'll be honest. I mean, I believe it mm. because no, that's no, just I the like kind of it. stupid person I am. No, I would like it. I, it would make me very happy to see. However, you know, the jaded, cynical part of me is like, hmm, I'm going to watch this very carefully. Well, I mean, since we're jumping around a little bit, the, the sneak peek from Talking Dead with John Dory in it, very, very short, very, it's really all it is. This guy is in bed during the daytime mm-hmm. and walkers are, are washing up on his shores. He seems to have been in a cabin on a river. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's like a little sandbar before, like before the river. So there's, you know, there's like a little spillover, mm-hmm. which is where the, the walkers 
rivers are getting stuck. They're getting stuck in the mud between the riverbank, you know, and the uh, and the actual river. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's kind of an odd thing seeing him get up in the middle of the day or, or maybe even the start of the day, sun's out, and take these guys down, take these walkers down. It just makes me feel like he's waiting out the apocalypse in the middle of nowhere and yeah. it's starting to get to him or something. Yeah, I so, mean, it's possible. It's a, that isolation. Right. So Which leads me to this idea that maybe the appearance of Naomi breathes life into him. Could be. Yeah, you see his face in the flashback also, and it's kind of like, oh, this shit again. <laughs> yeah. Like that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, this again and again every day. It's just the same thing. I'm taking down walkers that wash up. Yeah, and that's it. That's how he's been living his life until she shows up. Yep. Yeah. And it's kind of the way he describes it too so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That like she just kind of shows up. And he's been alone this whole time. The one thing I was upset about was that I was wrong about maybe where he's been. <laughs> it's like I assumed it was a movie theater. Oh, okay. He talks about movies all the time and Sorry. and the candy and the popcorn. And I'm just thinking, oh, it's a movie. He's got to be in movie theater. Oh, he's leaned into this cowboy life. And nah, I'm wrong. Maybe. No, I don't okay. know. You Most never likely. Know. You never know. Yeah. But yeah, I guess we don't. Not yet. No. But he doesn't really have like in the flash. In, in those scenes from next week's episode, he's not really dressed up in that cowboy getup, though. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I wonder when that all kind of fits in, you know? Yeah. I mean, well, he does in the show, he does mention that he's a police officer. Right. You know, now that we're on the subject still. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yes. yeah. And he was talking about a buddy on the force and, and, and how he ran into a bit of bad luck. Guy was a heavy, you know, heavy drinker. Right, right. And then this bit of bad luck basically got him to stay stop for a little while and the idea of that story being like good or bad we kind of always return to our nature you know right yeah Mm -hmm. so it could be a thing that happens that makes you change but then eventually you kind of go back to your old habits but then it could be something bad that happens that makes you like nick oh want to kill ennis and then but you know you can always kind of come back right and like it's kind of like madison says no one's gone till they're gone right you may get set back and you may have an attitude adjustment but then you'll find your way back you'll find your way back yeah 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 so it's kind of like jenna elfman said on our, t- on our twitter <laughs> responses she's like yeah just, just watch and see i i fangirled fangirled major major i, I, I was a little overwhelmed I, I i i thought that when you said you needed to take an antihistamine i thought it was because of that and i completely <laughs> is that agreed. what you meant that's what i thought i sincerely <laughs> thought that was it and i was like oh my god for sure <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile like my eyes are puffing up <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. My bad. I didn't really. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize you were dying. Oh, sorry. So it wasn't about being starstruck at all. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Never mind. That was just me. <laughs> so, that made me laugh more than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> you being sensitive about me dying. I was like, oh, yeah. God. I was like, oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. Meanwhile, my eyes are closing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's like, I can barely see. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they might as well fall asleep. Yeah, because that was like, oh, my God, this is like the highlight of the week. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Uh, that was a little bit out of nowhere. So we basically... Very- uh, just to give everybody a little bit of background to what I just said, I, so I've been just hitting, I've been hitting the Instagrams a little harder. Just Instagram re- is great. I mean, honestly, I will tell you, I spend more time on Instagram than anything else. Yeah, True. it's it's scaring me a little bit. I mean, I've been just taking our Squawking Dead account, and I've been go ahead. Yeah, we we, I, we have all we're following all the showrunners, we're following the mm-hmm. cinematographers, director of photography, and we've been very fortunate to get some feedback from certain players. Yeah, like like Garrett. Hunt, uh, sometimes Xander Berkeley, well, sometimes mm-hmm. really odd exchanges with Xander Berkeley. I was going to say that he's the character. <laughs> uh, uh, let me just give them, a, let me, I'm going to give you a little highlight. It's at one point, I was behooved to send Xander Berkeley Mark Twain's daughter's public piece on how her father is not actually an ugly man, <laughs> but is actually a very handsome man. So I yes. sent him that back. And I'm not even going to give that context at all, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. how we got to that point. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, as far as being overwhelmed, Overwhelmed, I had been hitting one of Jenna Elfman's like m- more recent Instagram posts and just been mm-hmm. just been talking to other people, not really Jenna Elfman as much. No, just in general, like just kind of having conversations, like yeah. keeping the conversation going. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, Jenna Elfman just like likes a ton of the stuff that I've been yeah. posting. <gasps> I was like, oh, 
my gosh. <laughs> you're like, you're like, it's happening. It's <laughs> happening. <laughs> no, that would be my reaction if one day Jeffrey Dean Morgan comments on something. I will lose my shit. <laughs> I, will, I will. Yeah, I can't even and, talk. And you know what? What's really funny about that is it wouldn't even be me. I think it would be something <laughs> that you've said because I I don't have, I don't even bother commenting on Jeffrey Dean Morgan stuff because I just I know do. it's just, there's so many <laughs> likes and comments. I know. I do be it's overwhelming. I, I do not necessarily expecting a response. That's the thing. It's like I just sort of like whatever is the conversation going, then I just sort of like, oh, okay, you know, if it's something that's worth commenting for, then fine. But yeah, you don't expect like I don't with anybody in general. <laughs> I don't expect any sort of response. So when you do get it, it's like, wow, this is crazy. Yeah. But you know what you know what makes it more overwhelming than anything else is that when you're so when you do it for people like Jenna Elfman, Garrett Dillhunt, uh, even real Lenny James. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the Instagram accounts those are fine those are so good because then the more comments are m- commentable mm-hmm. but when you go to like Jeffrey D. Morgan or Norman Reedus it's no, just I know what you're like, saying it becomes Bezos, like, Bezos you know, I know like, no I know that's the, that's the tons worst tons of emojis like the eggplant it's, with the wet oh, sign God. <laughs> yeah no it's the, it, it is the worst I agree because it's like on occasion like there, there will be some comments that like you can legitimately pipe in on and it's like oh okay you know fine but yeah you're right it gets kind of ing- Oh, so unwieldy. It gets engulfed with all of this minutia commentary that's just sort of like, I love you. And it's like, oh, oh, God. And you know what? You know what's funny? Like, even like Stephen Ogg, half the time I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. Mm-hmm. But then I would say a good half of the comments on Stephen Ogg's Instagram posts are Trevor. Just the word Trevor. Yes, yes. And I'm just like, right really? There. Seriously, dude? They're you have still, nothing else to offer? They're still obsessed with like Trevor. I mean, yeah. no, but just the word. It's just Trevor. Yeah. Nothing else. No, it's it's just, it's 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 garbage. Because it just <sighs> basically like, you know, just junks up, you know, the, the feed with all this crap. And it's like, come on, man. Like, yeah. really? So, no, I get it. You know, with certain people for sure, like there, there could be substance there, but it just gets just drowned in all this crap. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. So you just kind of like walk away. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. You're just like, oh, never yeah. mind. It's, it's interesting to see the rapport. And who is more involved with that sort of thing? Because not everybody is as into social media as some. Some people are more than others, definitely. Right. Like definitely um, Garrett Dale Hunt. <laughs> he, <laughs> He's pretty into it. No, that's what I mean. It's like some people really are. Some people are like on it and they're responsive. They, they, they respond quick and then... And they're very upfront to say, like, you know, it's not necessarily my thing, but, you know. Oh, yeah, right. no, definitely. Like, I, could, I can easily see, like, Lenny James set up, like, a social media account or two or three, but, like, he's not been really posting. Right, exactly. I, I feel like he was pressured maybe into it, too. <sighs> yeah, I'm sure you know? all of them are to, to have some sort of presence, you know. Yeah, so they yeah. set something up, have a presence there, and that's it, you know. Yeah. And, and otherwise, like, they, they just kind of, like, let it ride, you know, but they're not necessarily as involved. Right. Right. But I mean, the rest of them have been pretty much all no, in. Denai Garcia. I mean, mm-hmm. really, Denai Garcia, Jenna Elfman, Garrett Dillahunt, even Maggie Grace to a, to an extent. Oh, God. And Coleman Domingo. Let uh. me just take a minute <laughs> to just say, first of all, he, his posts are the most engaging because really? it, they're not more. they're not all limited to just Fear the Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. Whereas the others, except for Lenny James, which is like completely not. Um, mm-hmm. The others are more promoting the show, more uh-huh. or less, you know. Mm. here and there Mm-hmm. But but Coleman kind of fills it out, you know. He gives mm-hmm. you a little extra. This is the Donna Summer musical and everything. Yeah. So so he gives you a little extra. Uh huh. So and uh-huh. you know between that uh-huh. and his swag, it's just amazing. Uh huh. He's such a he's like a dude you want to get to know. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pay attention. Pay attention. I, I will. I'm gonna pay attention more. I'm he's not the king of swag, that. y'all. He is very. He he definitely has that swag. That's mm. for sure. But definitely the con man. For sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. He's just, his personality just drips of mm-hmm. like the swag lends to the con man. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. It all lends to that sort of vibe. I hope he, he doesn't get pigeonholed into these roles too, by the way. <laughs> I know that's, the, yeah, no, that's the hard thing. I mean, with a, with a lot of these people, it's hard because when you, when you have such a distinctive role on a show, it happens all the time. I mean, I, I was a huge Mad Men fan. That's just, that's how it was for a lot of those characters. And I think some of them have been able to move on fairly well. I think. AKA John Hamm. <laughs> 
John Hamm, he's moved on to movies, that sort of thing, and it's worked out for him. Fun fact, by the way, I listened to an interview with Jeffrey Dean Morgan on Howard, and he was talking about his struggles in the acting world until he finally got his breakthrough later on in life. And he was saying that his biggest competition at all these auditions was John Hamm. Oh my God. The two of them were going for a lot of the same roles. And when I thought about it, I was like, you know what? I could kind of see that. He's like the polished version. Of, of yeah, of, of his character. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, mm. interesting. I was like, wow. I have to. I, hey, at least uh, John Hamm didn't win out on. Uh, I think what is it? Um, Supernatural. He was in Supernatural, right. right? But you know that John Hamm was in contention for Negan. He oh, tried get out of here. Yes. Yes, he did. Yeah. Well, I he can't did. see it. Yeah. No. That's no a tough way. sell, man. No way. But I think. But I think he went for it. I think he he went for the role of Negan too. He's too pretty, man. Too. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like he's too polished. Like it doesn't work. It doesn't work for the role. I can. See yeah. it verbally, like his voice. Yeah, from, from from a verbal standpoint, and from like he's an amazing actor. I think John Hamm is an amazing actor, and I think that he would definitely give it his all. And from a voice perspective and that sort of thing, I think he could do it. And I think he could be an asshole. I think he could do it. <laughs> you know, like no, I mean, I'm serious. Like I think he could, but he doesn't have the formidable presence. I just don't. I, I just wouldn't have bought it. It would have been a hard sell. It yeah, been there's a bit of like sell. down in the in the dirt feel. Mm-hmm. to Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Like I said, it's like John Hamm is like the more polished version, you know. He's yeah. clean cut. He doesn't have any tattoos. Him as Don Draper makes sense. I couldn't see Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Don Draper. That oh, would have been that would have been a tough sell. Yeah, what these actors must have to go through knowing yeah, that I like, know, right? No, you can't play this part because you're too polished. <laughs> you're too polished, man. You're too clean cut. It doesn't I, work for this. I'm sure he'll make it work. You, this is what it comes down to. I'm glad that Jeffrey Dean Morgan got to play Negan yeah. rather than John Hamm. Just yeah, because of that. Sure. But let's say we mind erased and John Hamm actually took the part. I think he could do it. Had we not seen Jeffrey Dean Morgan's performance, I think he could do it. Yeah. yeah let's not limit let's not no. limit John Hamm. Him. No, no, no. But. We're not limiting. He's he's done his share of movies, you yeah. know, so he's good. But when I think of like who translated their career best from uh, Mad Men and not being pigeonholed, Elizabeth Moss. She's in Handmaid's Tale, killing it as, as far as I'm concerned. Holy crap! Yeah, you know, I, and I kind of forgot about it, you know, it's almost unrecognizable. Unrecognizable. You forget that she was Peggy Olson on Mad Men. You right. completely move on from that. Like that, you're not even sort of like looking at them on screen and being like, oh yeah, Peggy Olson. It's like no, you know, she is. Handmaid's Tale. She has moved on and moved on very successfully. Oh, so, yeah. you know, the, you hope that you can do that, but not everybody can. That's oh, for yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Well, speaking of good acting, the, the one person I think on the show that's really killing it and you wouldn't think in like in, in an obvious way, but the actress that plays Alicia, Alicia Dudman Carey, mm. is that you see the huge difference between her character. The transformation. Uh, yeah. Well, both in last season, this season, and then even the character she is in the past versus the one that she is in the present. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm her dead eyes on Althea is something I noted several times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when she's in the present scenes, you know, just, mm-hmm. just looking at Althea, answering her questions, but answering it in a way. Very look, dead fan. Yeah, looking at her in a way that's almost surly, almost in some subtle but menacing way with contempt. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that weird? It's... <gasps> yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that description. She is someone who obviously has been through some very traumatic things that we still don't know obviously about yeah. and this is something that i mentioned is that but i feel like i have to kind of hammer on a little bit more is that the huge difference between alicia in the past alicia that kind of rebelled mm-hmm. if you had actually watched the i think it was the second season where they were on the boat and she radios in that guy that ends up boarding the ship she has this thing that she's really not supposed to have isn't she's not supposed to contact the outside world right you know they're supposed to be safe on the boat on the in the middle of the ocean but she does this gets him into trouble she, you know rebellious yeah. you know she leaves the group in the last season to just be out on her own and that she ends up falling into things and, and I guess eventually in the end she comes back to her family but mm-hmm. at the end of the day she's never been in lockstep with her mom yeah. and it's because of the of the things the mom has done you know and eventually you find out what Madison has done in the past and the things that she had to do to her husband etc all this stuff and it changes their dynamic but then yeah. you see them in the past and this season and they're just in complete lockstep they're just together they they're yep. on the same page let's save the stadium the stadium's where it's at yeah and then all of a sudden like 
in the present. Mm -hmm. It's as if having had that lockstep and then something broke it Mm -hmm. that to break that strong bond. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the result. And it shows it. She's really good at expressing herself. Her just expressing her face alone. It just dead eyes. Althea's even saying like, guys, your brother just died. You don't have to go through this. Right. Yeah. um, There may be something extra to this as if maybe the group got together on this and, and, and said, Hey, she's going to want our story. She's really into this idea. Let's milk it for all it's worth. You know, Mm -hmm. we can get her to do a whole bunch of things for us in the meantime. And I Mm -hmm. feel like that's, that's the, that's the impression that I walk away with it by the end of this episode is that they're giving her this story. They're giving her what she wants to, and she's eating it up, even though like she's trying to be the decent person and pushing him away. But I I feel like in a way, do do you feel like maybe they're, that they may have done this kind of on purpose that they're taking advantage of her, her hospitality, quote unquote, the the ability to get a safe ride everywhere. I mean, come on. I I think they're being sincere in their story. Oh, sure. No, I believe that. I'm talking to her. I think that they are using her for a safe ride, definitely. I think that their intention was to get their truck from her, you know, over her dead body or however they knew we were going to get it. Oh, um, I so see. I, I think That's that that interesting. was I think that that was the original intention when they fake, were, you know, were on, in the middle of the road and they come out to help them and they kind of ambush them. I think that they were possibly waiting to ambush somebody to get a ride in order for them to get to wherever it is that they need to get. And when they saw the flag inside the SWAT car, that was sort of like, hey, you're with them. You need to take us to your people or whatever, which obviously they said, no, we were not with them. Right. We'll show you where we got it. You so know? basically, you're, you, what you're saying is that we're going back. Back to the first episode, their whole intention was to hijack this. Whoa, I th- we got to get this thing. Yeah, I, I think that they definitely, for me, the way I interpreted it was that I felt like their intention was always to hijack a car because they needed a car to get to point B, wherever it is that they were headed, clearly to the to wherever the vultures are. Right. Um, that's what they're Wherever they moved on to, it sounds where, like. Wherever they moved on to, that's where they're trying to go. But, so, the, but the flag just complicated things. The flag just complicated things because then they were like, wait a second, you know where the, you, you are, you're in cahoots with these people so you need to take us to where you got this right right and then by by the time they 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 sorted it out it was already too late they're kind of yeah it's already too late having a dialogue yeah exactly yeah i mean just just thinking about the way that all shook out okay they they find the flag they go on this the car flips over Mm -hmm. by the time went off the rails a little literally (laughs) (laughs) i know i thought about it i'm like ooh, literally yeah and and by the time they they sort it out and they get the van in order Mm -hmm. uh, althea's given them a little too much for them to be able to resist saying okay you know rather than go right. through the ordeal of having to take this thing by force you know why don't we just take advantage of the information presented to kind of weave our way into this person who just can't resist a good story mm-hmm. to tell them everything you know right like what does it hurt us to let it out right mm-hmm so I'm wondering, yeah, so that's interesting. So I got a little bit more than I bargained for on with that question. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. So we do get Mel's story, you know, ha- what happened to them. Yes. That made he and his brother kind of be the way that they are. Well, we had uh, Madison. Him. <laughs> yeah, Madison tried to kind of fill in the blanks and they had to correct her. Mm, yeah, the, yeah, 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 definitely. Oof. On their story, yeah. Yeah, mm. I, and I think that makes it even more interesting because it's kind of the show making almost fun of itself. In a in way, a way. Yeah. yeah. In a way, yeah. Right. Say, so, oh yeah, this though in Madison is the the average watcher expecting mm-hmm. the same old story to kind of oh you're you're evil because of this. It was actually um, evil because of that. <laughs> And it's like, no, so, actually, this is what happened. Mm. Yeah. And the reason why I even bring this up so randomly is because I want to kind of ask, do you think the vultures are even evil in a way? Because, I mean, I did bring this up in the first, uh, you know, the first time we see them mm-hmm. is that it seems to me that it's the path of least resistance in terms of it's like the almost Gandhi version of being an evil person. That mm-hmm. you, you're weighed out these people and they're letting them pass in and out of the stadium, do what they need to do you know it's not as if they're menacing or talking down to them they're not yelling at them they're just Mm kind of just there there's no violence there's no guns that i've seen by the way have you seen a single gun that is true i have not yeah so everybody's making a lot of assumptions right yeah it all depends on what happened at the stadium exactly well yeah exactly like what what happened at the stadium because right now they make it seem like that they just waited out personally yeah i think that they do wait 
but I think that they have their little trailer of walkers that they just unload into these places and let them do their bidding for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I would I would actually agree with you if not for the fact of this dialogue. I, th- mm-hmm. and, and, and everything that they've evidenced seems that they're not so menacing. I mean, you know what okay. he reminds me of? He reminds me of Garrett from Terminus. Oh, yeah, yeah. You mentioned that, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. But you definitely know what, though? That that's, a th- that's the thing. What, th- what differentiates Mel from Garrett so far is there's no menacing, there's no captivity, there's no, first of all, there's no people eating. Yeah. So far. <laughs> But it's kind of <laughs> ominous, isn't it? Like just there, just yeah. that presence, just always just there. I will grant you that. Definitely the idea of, and it's almost kind of like, okay, what a stalker does. Yeah, in exactly. a way. Yeah, that creepy sort of stalkerish sort of like always just kind of there, just watching. Yeah, yeah. Or, or okay, and, uh, and and you must know this more, way more than I do. Is you having that guy friend that's just waiting for you to kind of. <laughs> Am I wrong? Like they just oh, kind of like come oh, around, waiting for that opportunity, just waiting yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, oh, one yeah. Day, one day yeah. she'll, oh, she'll be my girlfriend. Oh, we we females all know about one at least one. There's yeah. always one. Yeah, and oh, knowing yeah. full well that I've done this, I'm just, I'm just saying this right now. <laughs> Look, I am not immune from this. Oh, All my man. laundry is on the table waiting to be out folded. There. Yep. Putting it out there. Yep. yep. I'm 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 glad you're honest. That's good. Yeah, you Sometimes. know, you gotta you gotta be. You gotta, you gotta be. be. You gotta be honest. Yeah, sometimes yeah, and that's more of annoyance though. Yeah, but that's say. that's the vultures. <laughs> Right there. That's right there. That's that. That's what they are. And what's interesting about that is that it really, it, it really is kind of like that. The interactions between Madison and Mel, they're friendly. Mm-hmm. He offered her a weenie. <laughs> <laughs> he did. I bet he did. <laughs> just like that friend right um oh god yeah that's that's the thing that mel is just kind of ribbing her he's, he's yeah, saying hey, listen yes. hey you send them out they may not come back mm-hmm. and and the one thing i want to kind of note about that before i continue with this idea is that when we first hear this dialogue in the sneak peeks yeah i had assumed he was saying look it's dangerous out there you keep sending your people out they may not come back because they'll get you know eaten by walkers right, or right. something will happen to them or mm-hmm. whatever but from this episode episode it seems and and we're going to draw this out is that we're going to be out here waiting you out your people are going to run away right it's more that than it is the dangers that are out there yeah no it's it's very good point and and she even mentions she's like no they always they'll, they'll come they'll be back they'll, they're capable they'll come back and in reality what we see is that each of the three groupings or pairings i should say all have thoughts of running yeah screw this this ain't going anywhere so you know what time to head to higher ground and ultimately all three of them decided no i'm gonna do the right thing i'm gonna go back and at the end of the episode they all say that they regret it that it was the worst decision they ever made right in the present they regret it in the present yeah yep they say that they should have trust their instinct and should have fled right right and what's what's interesting about that is that again it's like i mentioned in the intro is it's what these characters should have been doing Mm -hmm. they should have been avoiding their more base habitual instincts right and yet it's it's kind of like nick oh i should have done heroin Right, that it's, but that's the thing, right? Yeah. It's like the thing that I've been trying not to do is right. the very thing that gets us in trouble. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. oh, I should have smeared blood on myself and left the group for days on end, or in the yeah. bit and gone into another community. Mm-hmm. Oh, I should have done that without notice. Mm-hmm. So that's what makes it such a mind fuck. It's like how screwed up is it that that that's the case? That yeah, the very thing you're working on is the thing that causes the downfall. That causes the downfall. Holy yeah. Holy crap. Boy, yeah. I can't even imagine it. That's like me posting something too private on social media. Oh, that could have saved the day. <laughs> that could have landed me my million dollar job or whatever. You know, that sort of thing. God. Yeah. Is there a social media lottery? That's what I would have won. That's what it would have been. <laughs> for, for, for posting... <laughs> Posting a dick pic online or something for the public. Yeah. Oh, those are never good. Please, dear God, that needs to stop. Uh, So yeah, speaking of pricks, uh, (laughs) (laughs) I I think I think there's something significant that I kind of want to circle back to, and and it's not even the deeper points of everybody's personal laundry that may have caused them to 
this whole stadium thing did not happen. But mm-hmm. it's the whole thing with Cole and Strand going to mm. the uh, the greenhouse. Yeah. They get accosted by these cacti walkers, right? That was pretty cool. Yeah. Which I was like, oh, acupuncture walkers. No, it's <laughs> cacti nettles. So, <laughs> I know. I know. I was like, oh, oh okay, cool. Uh, I, cool. I thought it was like some new agey thing, but it, it just turns out, oh, it's just the environment. Okay, cool. <laughs> no, and I thought it was very impressive too, but Cole gets toppled down by one yes. of these walkers, right? Mm-hmm. My mind started wandering to like the logical conclusion of what this could mean. It, you'd think it was innocuous, but I was thinking myself what effect could these needles have on coal what if the, the hmm. thing that causes the downfall uh-huh. happens to be coal hmm. do you remember how the saviors uh, covered their weapons and yeah. guts and stuff like that and yeah. cut them and, it, and mm-hmm. they all turned yeah like what if coal is now like the sleeper mm. and that's that'd what causes the whole thing that'd be interesting that'd right be very interesting yeah all right and, and it's so unassuming nobody's thinking this yeah you know and they don't even allude to the fact that this may be an Problem. But I do like at the end of that scene, just, it's just so perfect, is how he snuck in just the word pricks. He yes. says the word pricks at the end of that scene. Yes. <laughs> and I just thought it was so perfect. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's funny. Little pun. That, that is funny. Yeah, little, little cacti needle pun. Yeah, I it's like a lot it. of cacti. Yeah, yeah. Well, think about it. They're like walking out there. <laughs> their walkers are walking out there in the desert and looking oh. at objects. It's like the little oasis for them to see a little cactus. Oh, it looks like a person. Oh, I'll, I'll eat that. Oh, no, mm. it's a cactus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Poor, poor walkers. Mm. Mm. But yeah, I, I just enjoy the thought of, of maybe... Oh, well, I don't enjoy the thought of, of Cole being the sleeper. I mean, I got to know him. Oh, getting used to him. That'd be interesting. If you do the math on all of this, mm-hmm. had they not gone all the way out there to Cole and Strand, they wouldn't have buddied up. They wouldn't have gone to the place in the first place. Luciana and Nick would have run away. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Naomi would have would have fled. Yeah. You know, Alicia would have probably come back, but she would have convinced her mom to leave. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. Know, and then Cole would just be by himself. Be like, oh, yeah. I wish Strand liked me. And then he would turn. Nobody, he wouldn't be around anybody yeah 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 so could be something could, could be, be something. something could still be a possibility yeah but if they didn't stick around they wouldn't meet john dory hello i know and he's a major character yeah i know the morgan thing mm-hmm. althea i don't know yeah, I mean, heavy hitters would, yeah i mean they would have been better off probably but still mm-hmm. if all the story does is somehow link john to laura that could be compelling on its own <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm still okay with that. I, yeah. I don't necessarily need it to be part of a much bigger web or for that to be known already. I'm okay with it just being the story of the two of them. I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like what I was saying in the beginning. Nick having died, mm-hmm. it has been a, a means for the group, but moreover Morgan to kind of weave himself into the group a little faster than would have been normally possible. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm sure Nick would have bonded with Morgan over the Aikido stuff, but... Yeah, it seems like he was definitely interested but probably not with the rest of the group Mm. but now as a result he's kind of bonding with the rest of the group i mean the whole the suggestion of where they should bury him that must have caught them off guard yeah i think so and then and then the whole blue bonnet at the end Mm -hmm. Uh, you stole my heart lenny james yeah it was very it was it was good it was well done Oh, yeah, it was perfect. Oh, what a nice send off. Mm-hmm. I think they're taking some good direction. They're taking some good moves with Morgan. Everything everything the Morgan character has been doing in this episode has been just perfectly executed. Mm-hmm. Every decision he makes in this episode is it's just like a perfect way for him to get in with the group. Yeah. Yeah. And especially with John, just finally admitting that, okay, I can't leave this guy in this state. Yeah, it's it's kind of like Benjamin being killed. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's just like I I just can't. I need to do something. I need to take this on. And at least this isn't one of those things where he's taking a vendetta out. Like he's actually saying, okay, I'll stick around. I'll I'll hang around with this guy. See what see what happens. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll be there for this guy, this John Dory fella. To me, that was very endearing and so subtle. Oh yeah, yeah. And you know, Lenny James does make mention of one thing though, is that, <laughs> and it's the silliest thing, but it may actually be. Part of the reason is the is the whole popcorn socks. Popcorn socks. <laughs> He he actually says that it's just the smallest thing how John Dory is so caring for for this complete stranger. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I let him sleep by the eat by the fire. I got beans and beans. I, I've got a place to sleep in the truck. You can take the flatbed, no problem. It's just these little things that keep building up to this person who is like mm-hmm. obviously a kind person. Yeah, obviously a rarity in this life. You know when yeah. you run, when you run across Leland and the Pilfers and guys like the Saviors, but also maybe even Rick's crew. Uh, <laughs> 
together. You know, uh, hello, Rick's, <laughs> yeah. Rick's murderous crew. Yeah, exactly. Well, and then Carol, and then first of all, them giving him so much crap for not killing mm. all of them. Mm-hmm. Like, well, maybe Morgan, maybe you could put down, you could pick up a gun. You know, could I'm you? Like, could like, you man, pick up a gun? I'm like, yeah, man, you guys don't even know. Like, <laughs> don't, don't give that man a gun. Don't, <laughs> don't, even, don't, don't even put him in that position. Yeah. Are these people at all conscious of the fact that what the, what kind of no. horrors that they've wrought by giving this man a gun? No, not at all. <laughs> they had no idea. None. <laughs> But no, I mean, they, they have no idea that they, they would feed into this man's bloodthirst, make him fly off the deep end again. Because with uh, Morgan, there's no in between. Oh, it's yeah. I, no. it, it's either 150% or zero. And that's the crazy thing, because Rick knows. Mm-hmm. It's not as if the episode Clear was later on in the seasons. Yeah. It was just yeah. in the third season, man. They know his crazy state. They know he's crazy. Yeah. What a son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, he's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Did you think that maybe Strand was slipping, first of all? I, I think that he's a person who looks out of who who operates out of self preservation, and I think that that was that was his backup plan in case shit hits the fan. And here we are with a similar situation. Here we so, are covered in shit, basically. Yeah, basically. And he tells him, "It's like, look, you know, because Cole asks him, like, why haven't you brought this over there?" And basically, he's saying, "Well, forty seven some odd people. This is not going to cut it for like even a day." But he's like, "But this for two people. This is this works." It's like you a know? month, basically. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So he kind of propositions him in terms of, are you down? And, you know, obviously Cole says no, opts to return back. And you kind of leave him sort of pondering like his next move. But obviously we see ultimately that he does return. And Madison's yeah. super excited and grateful because obviously he shows up with all this stuff, not knowing that he was he's had that stuff for, you know, however long as yeah. his uh, backup plan. Yeah, I have to admit that he could have done worse as Strand. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I don't By think By having it was... this car, he could have done way yeah, worse. Yeah, no, I, I don't think it was crazy. Based on what they've been through, I don't see that as being an unreasonable thing that anybody would do. Right, right. And I think there's a little bit of an emphasis on that. Mm-hmm. I, I think it was designed in a way that we wouldn't fault Strand mm-hmm. for being that way. Mm-hmm. And even being him, it's like the least he could do mm-hmm. as a person instead of hijacking a dam, you know, right, <laughs> sort right, of thing. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's it's completely almost excusable. Obviously, Cole takes offense to this, and he, he's yeah. right to, but he doesn't know Strand. It, it's mm-hmm. it's for us, it's par for the course. We know it. Right. But it's nice to have... It's kind of interesting to to have that Cole character mm-hmm. not having seen seasons one through three. Yeah. No, exactly. And, and to have that it's perspective like, oh, man, to kind of tell us... Know. Yeah. He's, he's almost telling us how to react to this sort of situation too, by the way. Because we're used to this by now. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's funny. I still think it was kind of interesting that Strand did this. Because for the first couple of episodes, we're really noticing this kind of almost new Strand. For First of all, being really cool, really nice, not not mm-hmm. doing anything behind anybody's back, as far as we know. Yeah. Even, even taking out the pebble from the the concrete wall of the yeah. of the dam to remind him how not to be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was taken aback at first, though, considering about. the fact that he brought out the pebble mm-hmm. in the first or the second episode, that he had this anyway. And he was kind of giving the business to Cole about how you don't know me. This is me sort of thing. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. well, hold on a second. I thought you had taken that pebble out several times to remind yourself not to do this. But, right, right. Yeah, but here we are. But I guess I don't fault him because he's had this for three weeks while the vultures were around and mm-hmm. hasn't gone away yet. So, I mean, maybe he just kind of left it there just for him to use at a later date or something. Yeah, he might have forgotten about it and it's just been there. Yeah, yeah. And it, and it's been explained. Strand is a businessman through and through. And it's the kind of person he is. And businessmen, when it comes to income, they don't just throw it into a bank. They they invest in things. Right, right. And this this could have just been one of those things. Mm-hmm. So, so I get it. I get no, it. No, I understand. I I understand completely. Any any things in particular that we want to talk about in terms of the water park? It was a very nerve wracking scene. That's for sure. Which one? The one at the top of the uh, water oh, slide. Oh, the whole thing. Even oh, just the toilet climbing, bowl, really. Too. Even just yeah, and even just climbing up there, I was like, oh god, one false move, and you guys are going all the way back down. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. It's like the Candyland slide. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> you just, if you make that one wrong move, the slide takes you all the way back to the beginning. Yeah. Or was it shoots and ladders? It was shoots and ladders. Yeah. Uh, yep. I messed those two games up. So, you get the idea. Yeah, yeah. I, I did want to note one thing. I thought the walkers in the pool were kind of strange. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, they were going okay. really oddly slow. Mm. I, I think we found the retardant uh, that, that slows down the walkers and it's chlorine. Uh, can you imagine? Can you yeah. imagine if that's what it is? It's like chlorine. That's what it'll take. <laughs> yeah, it's it's what's for breakfast. So it's, it's funny how chlorine in a pool makes kids move around a lot faster, but makes walkers go a lot slower. Yeah, there you go. Ah, man. Oh, that's That'd be pretty cool. That'd yeah. be pretty cool. Did we he- haven't, we've kind of stepped a far ways away from the whole, is there a cure? Is there whatever? Like, we kind of haven't really explored that possibility. Yeah. But the show <laughs> hasn't, I should say. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's trying to be anything more than it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you remember in The Walking Dead, the whole CDC thing, yes. they, they kind of try to remove hope. <laughs> They're like, no, we're, costs. We, we're, we're removing hope. Everybody has it. It's too late. You can't do anything. And now we're going to blow this shit up. And that's basically <laughs> what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Me and everything in this building are going up in smoke. Yep. That's it. It's done. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Goodbye now. Yeah. It's very, very uh, encouraging. I like what they're able to walk away with in the water park, all the first aid equipment, the, the ability. Right. To all the f- medical supplies that they yeah. were looking at. Mm-hmm. I mean, the ability to find Naomi a pur- pur- purpose in the stadium is mm-hmm. one thing, but there is there are there are some odd things. I mean, yeah. really some odd things about her character. And, and I know we brought them up already, but she says something to the effect of, I can't do this again. Yeah. And I didn't bring this up last time. And this is probably the one of the most glaring of responses that she has. And she says this, by the way, for, for those who aren't following, is when she escapes to the Land Rover, discovers it's out of gas, Alicia mm-hmm. caps, catches up with her and she's like mm-hmm. I just can't do this again right 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 again what does that mean what uh, happened before huh what did you and John Dory get into <laughs> <laughs> now yeah yeah so what is this again thing and which makes me think okay i don't think it has anything to do with john dory mm, mm-hmm. like surviving and i think she was part of another group i i could see that i could see that maybe that's the thing that gets her to, that washes her up onto john's shores right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so what was she a part of was she a part of the she might have just been a loner but what what is this again thing like though did she go well, well, what she go, went through again maybe well then yeah you're right maybe she was part of a community that you know the savior came and or the vultures oh what Oops, sorry <laughs> not saviors vultures the part vulture. of oceanside what and washed up at john shorey shores john shorey's <laughs> john Dory Shore. no that, that would actually be really interesting that would be very interesting yeah i, I don't i don't know I don't know yeah this is what i'm saying about her care about her person say so mm-hmm. her character is that it's just so confusing it, yeah there's too many things that you can say hey wait wait that's not wait you can't just say that right <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> you got to qualify that. Ah, uh, no, just... never mind. I don't want to talk about it. What? what? <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, we're going to talk about this right now. Yeah, no, no. You and me, we gotta hash this out. You, you mm-hmm. know, you turn the chair backwards. You see, let's wrap. Come on. That's the more it. you know, the more you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I, I want to get a clarification on what Nick's plan is after the library. Mm-hmm. After the library, Nick and Luciana walk away with a plan for going up north. As far as I can tell, and you know, you can maybe even correct me about what you think. It seems as though instead of moving to the place that they point to on the atlas, mm-hmm. yeah, and this is basically the. Southwest uh, territories like yeah. Texas and all that. It seems to me that they pick a spot that's really far away that they can get a whole bunch of gardening stuff, you know, seeds and everything else. It seems to me that they're going to try to rebuild the stadium itself. At first, I thought when what they were thinking was, okay, we're going to plant a bunch of stuff elsewhere, mm-hmm. really far away, mm-hmm. and then come back when the season is, you know, that the, they've, they've grown, mm-hmm. and then bring them back. Well, that's an interesting theory. Yeah. But no, no, but I, but I, when after rewatching, I was like, oh wait, no, no, I think, I think they, they mean to actually get like a whole bunch of seed and maybe plants and just bring them to the, the stadium and just uh-huh. replant them. Mm-hmm. I think they do want to emphasize making the stadium where it's at. Yeah, you know, and maybe the whole, it's like, oh, we'll go to Kansas and get wheat, you know, and then we'll go mm-hmm. to Oklahoma and we'll get uh, corn. You know mm-hmm. what I mean, like that. So like, like when they mean go far away, they mean really far away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I agree. 
I agree with that. Stuff. And then bring it here, you know, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We only have to go once, and it's then we're sustainable. So, so is that what you thought when you saw that, or? Um. Yeah. I mean, I I definitely had suspicions and feelings of of that. It, it's definitely tricky but i i do i do feel like that was the intention i think that was the point i think originally when they had the atlas from luciana's case she wanted to just basically get the hell out of dodge that's cool you know yeah, yeah that was her intention very yeah. clearly her intention her, and again this kind of brings back the ideas of her leaving nick in the third season mm-hmm. just like hey look the, the colonia you helped me leave that place that place was fucked up mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh and look this broke jar ranch uh they're kind of racist so uh, I'm, I'm i'm a go right now yeah so she does the same thing so she pressures nick to leaving as well and so we're kind of back to the same point again where yeah. she's not really pressuring him too much and it's not as if he doesn't want to leave either but he kind of figures out a way to kind of stay so but again we're revisiting these old habits so yeah yeah I just, I just yeah but you know what's interesting about what nick thinks of is that luciana is completely on board mm-hmm it's just like the other two, just like Alicia and Strand. It's mm-hmm. not as if they're reluctantly agreeing. No, no, they're they're fully in it. What makes their downfall so apropos, not only are they in full agreement, is as if it's almost as if they're latching onto the stadium yeah. for dear life. You know, like, yeah. hey, this is the means for which I change my character. This is the means mm-hmm. of which I maintain. I, it, Strand even says it outright. It's like, I wanted to be a better person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that he was does it. say it. That was it. That was it. That's all it was. And that was taken away from them. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like as though Nick's plan, you know, the overall plan of taking the really, really long road trip Mm -hmm. for for the purposes of bringing back back seed and and plants and all that stuff. I feel like that may have been the plan. Okay. All, let me see, all four of them drove Mm -hmm. out to to get the stuff and then they come back. Yeah. And then they see the stadium is is completely empty or something. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See, now the only thing about that is, okay, I can see maybe Madison has disappeared. So how do they determine that Naomi is dead? Yeah. They haven't said that Madison is dead, but they have said that, you know, she's, she gone. She dead. I guess. I don't know. No, yeah, that's I mean, a tough one. I mean, we really don't know. <laughs> yeah, and we don't. I, let's we just don't. be honest. We, we don't know. No, so we're, we're all just trying to speculate. Piece, yeah, piece this stuff together just based on what we we kind of sort of know. Because mm-hmm. then again, the one thing that bugs me about not as much the rest of them, but Alicia, mm-hmm. is how cold she's able to rattle out that Laura slash Naomi is dead. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, this is what's happening. Move on. And even Strand does the same sort of thing. Oh, it's kind of funny how your love story got screwed yeah yeah like like oh you finally find your love and it just happens to be a shitstorm. this is what you have to deal with now yeah they're a little bitter yeah but I did write something down and it's that I, I wonder what their angle is by telling him this way or maybe if, if Naomi isn't really dead mm-hmm. maybe they get this gunslinger as a, as a kind of like a warrior on their side I wonder if that might have been intentional could be like if we tell them that Naomi died or maybe that Naomi is Laura Maybe it's not. Who knows? It obviously looks like that from the flashbacks. But what if they just tell her that she died and yeah. then they have, they have one more person to help out, get mm-hmm. revenge? Yeah. Uh, I'd say it's possible. Yeah. I mean, have they seen his talents, by the way? <laughs> That's a very good question. Yeah. I'm know. just trying to think back to the last episode. Have they seen him like use the guns and everything mm-hmm. like that? I don't know if they did though. Not like in this season. No, or yeah, not like in the last episode. I don't know. No, I guess not. That's okay. I'm all right with the substance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I could see that. Oh, yeah. And one more thing. When Madison's actually talking with Mel, mm-hmm. something that I thought would, should happen, actually did happen. And that was she does offer the vultures a place in the stadium. Mm. You know, I had, I had a feeling that that, you know, okay, look, Madison's been this open kind of person. She's been flexible. Yeah. You know, she's been, you know, open to good things happening in the future for her and her family, right. etc. It's like, mm. why wouldn't that good vibe spill over to the vultures? She's got to ask them. She's got to make it a point to ask them to join up. It's just going to severely backfire. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it, you know, and they, they don't even agree. You know, it's like, hey, this is our way of life. It goes on to telling them the story, too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I'm just glad that that happened, too. Madison can't can't just say no for the sake of saying no without offering a spot. Right, right, because right. It seems like that's where she's at in life. Mm-hmm. 
So I was kind of I pleased, agree. I was kind of pleased with that. At, at the end of the day, when they close it with a video interview saying, "I should have ran away. I should have. Yeah. I should have escaped." Each one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it was the worst day of our lives. You know, like yeah. how how eventually that's what caused the stadium to fall. Right. I'm and like, hey, I want to see what exactly happened. Yeah, exactly. Are you like teased to death right now? And I think that's mm-hmm. what Althea is going through, by the way, after getting this massive story. Forty-five pages worth. <laughs> yeah. She of story. Seems. How can you not be hooked as a, as a truth seeker that Althea is? Yeah. It's the perfect manipulation. It's like, oh, we've got her. Hook, line, and sinker. Mm-hmm. She's going to drive us everywhere. Hey, you know, Uber, can you take me here? <laughs> oh, wow. Is this Uber XL? <laughs> so that's very interesting. Yeah. So, so yeah. And, and even after finding out, and like, like she's obviously feels betrayed when they finally take her to the spot where Nick is being buried, air quotes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then finds out this is like a weapons cache. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that even if they even despite that fact, mm-hmm. she cannot help herself mm. from like trying to find out more about this story because mm-hmm. it's just so much. There's just so much to look at here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the the best thing that we can do right now is is <laughs> wait and watch because. We're right at the cusp of finding out what's going on. And I think the worst part about that is we know full well they're going to go into a John Dory flashback. Yep. And that's the biggest, oh, and I hope it's not like a full episode too. Cause I think I, it is. <sighs> Damn it. I think it will be, personally. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I hope in the process of maybe picking that apart, we get to find out what Naomi's really like. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm, but somehow I don't think that's going to happen. We're not going to know everything because I think no, we're going to get a gonna... version of Naomi slash Laura that I don't think even the group was able to see. True. That is true. Yeah. I, I, this is my prediction. Mm-hmm. Personality disorder, completely. But, <gasps> Which hence the different names. Uh-huh. These are characters she's playing. Well, what if she's kind of like a mini vulture? If you really think about it, the vultures sit outside and wait for people to kind of give up or die uh-huh. or whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. What if Naomi's like a mini vulture? What if she becomes whoever she like a chameleon? Really? What mm-hmm. if she becomes this character to do whatever she needs to do to survive? That's something to really think about. Mm-hmm. Like, you become the helpless girl with John Dory, yeah. and then you yeah. become this frightened squirrel in front of this group. This help person i don't know carol was able to do that for years exactly but this person does it way better <laughs> if that's the case way better like you're, you're like convinced you're like oh god oh she's been through so much yeah she <laughs> this is definitely oof, gone like, through some stuff yeah if she ha- if she is acting she's doing a hell of a good job hell of a good job she's like the jeffrey dean morgan is negan good job <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay. yeah as opposed to john ham which is the carol performance there you go <laughs> Freaking right. John Ham, bringing it back. So we're we're really excited for the next episode, as you can absolutely. As you can tell. We're just just ah, oh, it's like we're it's like we're about to put relish on our wieners, and we just can't. We just, <laughs> just we we don't have it. We need to we need to get that episode. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> You're welcome, Internet. <laughs> I actually have one side little tidbit. You do? I do. It's really gimme. Gimme, I want. <laughs> it is it's related to Walking Dead. Oh really? Okay. So filming has started on oh, season yeah. nine. That's right. That's right. So, I think we're a couple weeks in, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there have been a few little tidbits and there's something about the setting that I am hopeful, I am hoping is what will translate to what my wish is. So apparently there's been a lot of filming at the Georgia State Capitol, something like oh. that. So it's a cityscape landscape, which is obviously different from the the whole being in the woods thing that we've been in the woods seems like 50 years. Like we've just been in the woods. Uh, (laughs) Season one. (laughs) Yeah, what amounts to like two months. (laughs) It's actually only been two months. My hope, because obviously this all is taking place in Virginia, story purposes. And this, and I say this because it's not a spoiler. It's not, it it was just a scene in the comic that was kind of cool that I'm hopeful that that's what they might do, where they kind of go on a run in DC proper, shoot up Walker congressmen and all this kind of stuff. Oh like my that. God. Dude, wow. Dude, if that happens, I will lose my mind because that would be so fucking cool. So cool. Yeah. It's so George Romero. It's yes. like, oh my gosh. Yes. They'll do like a, a faux Feinstein and then oh, a, faux, God. a yes. faux McCain or something. Yeah. I mean, if no, these guys, like if they knew what was good for them and they're running for re-election and they're trying to get votes, <laughs> I'm 
volunteer your ass to that. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like real politicians volunteering yeah. to be walkers. Well, there are people who would love to be walkers on the show. They're like, yeah, put me in the get up, put me in the makeup. Yeah, you know, make me up. I, I would, you know, what I would say. I mean, like, some of these guys don't need that much work. I mean, no. <laughs> I mean, Mitch McConnell doesn't need much. No, no. He could just show up as himself. Just show up at himself. Yeah, just dirty him up a little bit. Well, and- now, do, do I just show up? Do I, what do I do? Oh, you doesn't just get in the hit, hit in the head with somebody, you know, just, just some people just, smack yeah, you. Just, yeah, just walk around. That's, That's fine. You're good. That's fine. You're good. Exactly. But I'm hopeful... <laughs> That the filming in the Georgia State Capitol, it, yeah. that's that's why. So, because that would be a really cool way to start off the season. Yeah, I mean, they're always thought. trying to look out for good ways to, uh, different ways to kind of present Walker. So this is definitely yeah. one of them. That would definitely be one of them. And it would be different because we've just been conditioned to like, okay, we're in the woods, we're in the woods. Okay, we're still in the woods. You know, so it's, yeah. it, would be, it would be jarring. <laughs> we're we're in a factory, we're in the woods. <laughs> the clips that I saw, because obviously I troll, yeah. um, harken back to season one when you have Rick on the horse on the highway entering the city like that kind of stuff I'm like yeah let's go back to that I want I, I want a little bit of that I think you know what's really interesting about that is that not only yeah it, it does invoke feelings of season one mm-hmm. but it also invokes feelings of Rick the sheriff right yeah yeah no absolutely absolutely something that's been severely lacking in several lacking. seasons yeah very much mm-hmm. <laughs> what, what, what did Morales you know how, call you know, him? Uh, officer friendly <laughs> Officer friendly. Yep. <laughs> Officer yep. friendly with a stick. Oh, with a mace. God. Oh, jeez. That's so funny. <laughs> Which, uh, I'm yeah. glad we closed that chapter on Morales. That's done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, but I'm glad we brought that back because it you, does, because we need to, to explain how the feelings that this get brings up in us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that's my, that's my little tidbit of information. I am hopeful that that means we're going to see some Walker congressman. It's my hope. <laughs> yeah. If they really want to be as apolitical as possible, they could do the George Romero thing and be more yeah. hokey and, and yeah, and just be, yeah, be hokey and, about it. Yeah. yeah and, and make it be like former presidents, like, like a, like a Walker Obama and a Walker George W. Bush or something. It doesn't even have to be specific, man. Just like, oh, no, no. I, I think it does. Really? <laughs> that's, you're like, no, you're like, no, I need to distinguish who it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, that one looks like Elvis. You know, <laughs> no, okay, no, that one looks like Obama. Oh my God! Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm just excited about the idea of just these dudes in suits coming out as walkers. Yeah, I, I think I was talking to somebody about that too, and I was just like, man, you yeah, know, that's so freaking cool. Yeah, but you know what bites about that too is that uh-huh. okay, it's first of all, we're doing a flash forward to five years in the future. Now, yes, walkers are already looking very gnarly. Yeah. How much more gnarly are they going to look? I, right? I mean, that's the thing. That's the whole thing with this whole like zombie lore of it. I mean, do you get to a point where they are so decrepit and disintegrated that it's just, they're just, I, I don't know. I don't know. There is an opportunity to make them a lot more frightening looking, like a lot more. True. Right now, they still kind of, okay, they, they kind of Distinguishable. Like, they're yeah. still distinguishable as humans. Yeah. I, I was going to say that, but I was going to think more of like, uh, well, they still look like people in human in human prosthetics right mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. this could be an opportunity to make them make look more not ethereal but what's, what's the word for it? yeah like like more supernatural that's mm-hmm. that's the word i was looking for mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. oh these are like uh demons on earth yeah <laughs> you yeah. know mm-hmm. that, that's true i mean it's an opportunity yeah yeah it's just a thought too and winter mm-hmm. where's winter <laughs> okay okay <laughs> sorry a, hey, that ship has sailed <laughs> sorry winter winter is coming <laughs> Sorry, that's a different show. Oh, man. We'll oh. never get there. We're never going to get there. We might get rain. I think that we might get rain. Well, we've gotten we've rain before. We've gotten rain. Carol. We've gotten, we've gotten rain, but we haven't seen walkers in the rain, really. I mean, not so much. Sort of. I mean, look, Aaron, remember that one scene that you wanted, tried to forget? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> At Oceanside? Oh, Jesus. That scene was so annoying. So annoying. <laughs> Sorry I, I brought I, it up. I like Aaron, the actor that plays Aaron, very much. Oh, Ross Marquand, yeah. Yeah. I just felt like that was just so forced you know what i mean it's like and that is a little bit of the difference with fear i guess and walking dead right now it's like i think that fear is flowing very smoothly because i i feel like there are pieces of information we're piecing it together that you're you're getting remnants of this information and and you're putting it together little by little whereas i feel like with walking dead it's like you're just trying to shoehorn in so much information and i get it because there's so many characters there's so many storylines 
and they're just really trying to get it all in there. Right. But you feel it when you do that. Oh yeah, Sometimes for sure. It feels like, oh, okay, yeah, all right, I get it. You oh know? yeah, and that's that's the the big distinguishing difference between having backing mm-hmm. source material and then yeah. having a and literally having the wild wild west of writing. They literally are. Yeah, the wild yeah. wild west. Yeah. Like it's the it's the oh boy, it's the wild west. It, it's kind of the reason why I get really I feel like a little iffy when people are like, oh, I stopped watching the if you're the Walking Dead. I'm like, well, you know what? Did you really give it a chance? Yeah, I and mean, I just because to... just because they didn't have a backing comic and you no, know. you have to give it. And I and I told you how I feel about that. It's like I don't think that that the source material is 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 dogma. I don't think it it, it is the end all be all. I'm really excited for season nine. First of all, because the war is over, and I think the, the war was dragged out too long. Personally, for my take, I think they could have shaved off some time. I would have liked them to have kind of done a bit of a time jump before the end of the season, just to kind of wet the palate and kind of give us a taste of what's to come. But I think that now I'm, I'm very much looking forward to season nine because I feel that it, it's going to be a much fresh slate. And I know a lot of people are sort of like, oh, well, but Carl's dead and a lot of the storyline in, in, the, in the comic was so heavily hinging on him. Yeah, and that's kind of part of the reason why I'm really interested. Right, right. And it kind of it kind of brings us to a place where we can be, where, where we can have the same kind of the wild, kind wild of, west, right? right with, where it's like, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. No, I don't yeah. know what could happen. That's the thing I was trying to bring up is that having the source material is kind of great, and it, mm-hmm. it is also it's also really good to kind of break away from that. But in a way, I think maybe maybe just maybe that the source material and it has kind of shackled them, has kind of restrained them. Yeah, I think that they, there's like a boundary that they can't cross at some point, you know. Yeah, and maybe they need to. Maybe it's just they're trying to break the chains in, in their own way that, that of, are binding them, that yeah. are shackling them to yeah to the comic. The whole interesting introduction of Negan was very because he's such a character that people have latched onto in the comics that the people are just like oh, Negan the character of Negan you know Negan it's got to be perfect yeah exactly it's got to be perfect they better not mess him up they better make him just as good as he is in the comic and then they tried to do that and basically read him lines that were almost word for word what were in the comic and it just doesn't work the same way right right it well, just I th- doesn't I, I you think have to adapt it well, I think at but the end it, of the day, it took them a little too long. It took him a little too long to to, to flesh out his character. I right. Think to give him a purpose, right. To give him a purpose and to give him depth. Because in the beginning, I think that he was just a bit of a caricature. He would come in to Alexandra like, hey, whoop de doo I'm going to take <laughs> all you. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm big bad Negan and I'm going to take all your stuff and whatever. And it's like, <laughs> you know, it just was, it was, no, I love Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Don't get me wrong. No, no, but I love that you did that. That, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but it was hamming it up, you know? Right. And I mean, listen, don't get me wrong. And, and I tell people, it's like, Negan has some of the funniest lines and some of the best deliveries, you yeah. know? So, I mean, there were some lines that were major jewels, but I think that they took a little bit to give him that depth. And I do think it's a shame that, you know, they killed off Carl, not because I really like Carl. I was never super attached to Carl as a character, probably for similar reasons, because they just never fleshed him out entirely to me. <laughs> but his his presence would have helped add some some depth to Negan because you know we started seeing depth to him when Carl snuck into the sanctuary. That's when we started to see some depth, some other dimension. You know, him taking this kid under his wing and showing him around, showing him the ropes, and being almost sympathetic to him and, and, and listening to him. And at the end of the day, brought him home back home to his dad. I understand people's complaints about the way they, they've differentiated themselves from the comic with that decision but it also makes me interested interested to see like well how are we going to do this how do we take the story from here i kind of respect the fact that they did that because no, I, I respect think, it i, I it think it ballsy. gives yeah it gives them more of a reason to be able to do whatever they want to do now yeah they're they're not ba- they are bound by nothing basically yeah because the presence of carl would have significantly hindered them from taking a left turn because everybody would have been waiting for this carl storyline that's so much much in the comic that it, it would be unavoidable. They would have had to address it. There's no way. Right. By eliminating Carl altogether, it's like, well, that's no longer a factor. So now what? Well, yeah. yeah. And then they can skip around a bit too. Yeah. I mean, they mm-hmm. can they can decide to cut certain things from the narrative. They, they can pick can, and choose. 
Exactly. And so, and so, yeah, cutting Carl out actually makes really good sense. Mm -hmm. It really, really, really pulls out some of the stops that they may have had to do. It opens up the playing field for them. It really opens it up and it kind of like leaves it wide open for them to say, okay, we are bound by nothing. We can pick any of these storylines that are in the comic and say like, okay, let's, let's, let's pursue this and let's go down this road. Or pursue, it seems like, it feels like they're actually going to be pursuing two narratives at the same time. Yes. From what I'm hearing, from what I'm seeing, rather it, right it seems as though there may be they may be pursuing the so what's i guess called as the commonwealth thing yes, yes. as well as Georgie. the whispers thing yeah so i think they may have they may find a reason to combine these two storylines where they can weave into you know interweave them together interweave them together yeah, so, yeah. which which I'm, I'm looking forward to it there's there's been all sorts of speculation on who would be the head of the whispers alpha now mm, yes yeah there is a lot of is it a new person altogether right is it some Somebody we already know from Walking Dead or Fear. Right. You know, somebody who's already in the Walking Dead universe. In theory, I think it would be fascinating to have the Walking Dead be the 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 story of these heroes and survivors and their journey. It would be very interesting for Fear to be the story of how someone becomes a villain, quote unquote mm. villain. It would be very it, it's an interesting concept. Especially wow. because, not to give too much away, but the head of the Whispers, a little tribunal, is a woman named Alpha, a very formidable, tall, kind of like statured man that goes by Beta, mm-hmm. and her daughter. Oh, I see. Which is why a lot of people say, hmm, could that be Madison, Alicia, and Strand, <sighs> potentially? But it, it's 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 an interesting concept. The only fault with that concept, the minute you converge these two worlds in that way, yeah, in that way, you, one of those worlds well, you'll have to eliminate once they meet. Oh, that would that's be epic, it. though. That would be pretty epic. Who knows? I don't know what their master plan is. Maybe it is part of their master plan. Who who even knows? Uh-huh. But that's my theory on it. And the reason why I say that that also would be kind of interesting is because thinking about the vultures, who's to say that they don't join them, bend them to their will or whatever, especially because the Whispers are not all that different from the Vultures. They basically are a group that roams the land and wanders from place to place, scavenging and taking what they need and living among the dead. And they basically skin walkers and use them as masks to just basically be able to blend in right, with right, them. But right. they don't have any particular home. They wander from location to location as they need, taking what they need. Right, 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 right. I mean, it's really not all that far off. It would be a mightier crossover than Avengers Infinity War, I should just say. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, that that's it, it, it would be like but. a bigger <laughs> It would be bigger than Civil War. How about that? It would be, it would be bigger than Definitely. Civil War. There Same idea, much more cast. Yes, so. there you go. There you go. But yeah, it, like it would be these fun. clashing of these two titans. Literally, yeah. these, these whole big story stories mm-hmm. independently run. Mm-hmm. And then you can have like a mini series. Um, yeah, con- when they converge. Right. Yeah. Wow, we could be witnessing the beginning of the end of both uh, series. Kirkman and, and Gimple always like to talk as if they have this bigger plan. You know, they have like this bigger... <laughs> picture and whatever but you i mean who knows who yeah, knows? and gimple is involved too he you know, is in both no, he is. sorry both shows and both shows yeah he's now oversees this universe so as is nicotero too I'm not sure how much Kirkman is involved in the in Fear of the Walking Dead. With Walking Dead, definitely. I don't know really with Fear, but Gimple and Nick and uh, Greg Nicotero for both for sure. Yeah, the, and Gimple even even if on on, on the minor end of things, because it looks like Chambliss and was it Goldberg? I I can't, I can't remember what mm-hmm. the other guy is. They seem to be doing some really hell of a good writing. So definitely, but definitely. That, I do sense that there is a bit of guidance from Gimple. So yeah, that's that's, that's a pretty solid theory. I if, think if that's where this is going to go, if that's where it's going i would say that's super impressive super if, depressing in a way though i have to admit like in, yeah. in a sort of way because it's the beginning of the end yeah the beginning of the end having this f- hopeful family having to descend to that kind of place. to that kind of level yeah i mean yeah. it would be it would be a shame to see that that morph but it would be very epic to see like this is where these people started and this is where they ended up it would be interesting it would be an epic venture for them to try and do right whether right. or not that's going to happen i have no idea oh god and to even see how they would ex- begin to how execute those even, kinds yeah. of characters yeah translating their comic character into uh-huh. into screen character that's tough like how do you take somebody that's called alpha beta you know mm-hmm. seriously right mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Isn't that yeah. interesting? I mean, they're very formidable in the comic, and it's this very, I mean, they're a savage group. Yeah, they're, it they're sounds like. Sa- they're a pretty savage group. It would be interesting to see these characters who went from, like, being cookie dough to, like, just... <laughs> They're well, definitely not cookie dough. They definitely aren't right cookie dough anymore. But I mean, this is on another. Yeah, this is a whole other level. This a is whole like other level. This is like crack pie. It's like yeah, I mean, ugh. yeah, yeah. Who knows? You know, well, I mean, apparently talk. these whispers they 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 basically don't hesitate when it comes to killing too, though. No. Right? Yeah. So no. that's that's the other thing. That's that's more My... what I'm kind of like referring to. What in terms of the oh, descending to the, a certain level? My concern so much is even with the killing, um, which obviously is a oh really (laughs) well i see where you stand (laughs) as a person as a person (laughs) no i i feel that the the, one of the things that the whispers do that distinguishes them from other enemies particularly negan there's a there's a reason that on walking dead negan was very clear about no rape that is Mm. an absolute like remember like oh yeah and all that it's an unacceptable sort of thing right because the whispers are the opposite of that they use that as a weapon and right. they employ that on their victims and so i don't know if amc would go there mm-hmm. because that is such a even on channels like hbo or, or showtime i feel like that is like a line that ugh, yeah. uh, you know or, or I mean? maybe they could do the same thing they did with negan where like they imply he they has imply, concubines they Im- yeah the, it's implied but it's never necessary or courtesans or whatever they wants to call them but, yeah. right and then Although, maybe they imply they they have one dramatic scene and then yeah maybe like one dramatic scene while but still not necessarily showing as much yeah i mean maybe but it's that is the thing that always makes me feel like well gosh you know how are we gonna do this oh they'll uh, do it but i mean if they if they are gonna go that route and mm-hmm. I, I feel like they're gonna go there yeah you know some mm-hmm. of the some of the more of the other prominent theories is that they may even be setting up maggie to be that would be very interesting yeah that would be, there's there's a lot of possibilities possibilities i I've, I've heard carol jadis really mad yeah jadis i can sort of see but not carol i couldn't see carol but i think that they just kind of throw her out there just because of the fact that she is such a ruthless character and she has a tendency to wander off <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know i think they made it very clear that she that with yeah. the henry thing that she's yeah. kind of back yeah i don't i don't buy that anymore whatsoever like i think that was one of the theories that would have been tossed around last season but at this point i don't think anybody really really legitimately thinks that carol could be alpha i don't think even jadis i'm, I'm not convinced i think no. jadis i think jadis has more of a connection to the commonwealth actually than anything else based on the helicopter <laughs> and the and, and all that it's like, yeah I think, maybe maybe I, yeah i think that she has more of a connection there uh, yeah at this point maggie i'm not really sure yeah. maggie yeah. would be very interesting Mag- like, maggie seems maggie. more like it to me and, and a lot of people are running with that and you know maybe is alden or al is he is he the the beta dude and it, Ah, there's a whole thing about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they could they could be merging. They could be overlapping some of the storylines too. So that would be very. I mean, it would be very interesting to take Maggie in and put her as as that role. Maybe Beta being more like Daryl. God damn. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I can see the missed opportunity of Maggie pursuing Al mm-hmm. being like then passed on and over to Daryl, mm-hmm. and then Maggie and Daryl get together ish. Well, the, here's the thing. Like there there is no romantic relationship in the story between Alpha and Beta. I'm not like surprised. Beta, Beta is just very <laughs> her dutiful servant respects and carries out her wishes and, mm-hmm. and that's what she does. Alpha in the comic actually has close to a romantic relationship with Negan. Mm. That's wait. Mm. So that, that's woo, that makes things mm. a little bit more complicated. Than yes, it it? yes it does. Yes it does. That 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 really kind of makes it a harder sell for me in terms of mm-hmm. if it's it Maggie. Being Maggie. Maggie, right? Yeah, right. right. Because obviously, like, I don't see Maggie based on what we saw in the season finale being like, yeah, okay, sure. I mean, unless by romantic, you mean rape. No. <laughs> like, like Maggie rapes Negan. No. Uh, that's the romantic relationship I think she wants at the moment. Yeah, no. Like, strap in, 
in, buddy. Lucille's going in the back door. Oh, you know, that sort of thing. Oh, bad visual. Bad yeah, visual. you're welcome. I'm sorry. Thanks. I, I apologize. It's okay. But yeah, I mean, we it's... can always go back to relish on wieners. Oh, so. gosh. <laughs> Full circle. Yeah. Full circle. People. It makes the medicine go down the relish. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I shouldn't have gone there. I don't know. I didn't really think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like this I'm covering great... up one fire with another fire. <laughs> I really did fight fire with fire there. <laughs> this has been a great podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. It's a red letter day. Jenna Elfman comments <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We did it. We, <laughs> we did made it. it. We made it. Through the day. Through the day. Yeah. I was just going to say that the Maggie thing is a hard sell when I think about it from the larger picture of Negan and Alpha having some sort of very few characters in this post apocalyptic world truly have a romantic relationship. It's, it's almost like always like a mild flirtation and in interest that's implied but never necessarily pursued. Right. Which is the same thing. Both parties entertain it. I don't see Maggie entertaining anything from Negan. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's, it's it, yeah, it's it's just an extremely tough sell. Mm-hmm. Now that it's in my mind, it's it's kind of like okay, well, now I'm trying to envision all the ways in which that could happen. But yeah, it's like no, I'm not seeing it, I'm not visualizing it. We could be theorizing all this stuff, and it could be a completely new person. <laughs> Who's yeah, just, yeah. Who's just going to come in. Again, yeah, sure. I did hear somebody suggest Sherry. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you, yeah, you mentioned that like a long time ago, but now it's starting to make a little bit more sense. Yeah, but then Sherry and then it would have to be, Dwight would have to be somewhat involved there. Yeah, and- yeah. That I'm not seems buying that. rough to me. Yeah, I'm not buying that. I don't buy that because I, I just don't see necessarily that interesting theory, but no. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, Laura, no, I, I don't see that either. No, no. So what I was about to say was like, I do enjoy the idea of breaking the formula of running across another group that's uh, that's a threat to the gang and mm-hmm. instead of it being that the threat is from within i like that concept too it's yeah. different yeah. It's, it's it's not the same trope yeah they broke the wheel <laughs> yeah season finale was was all fine and good but i think that the most haunting part was maggie daryl and jesus basically conspiring so i think that that is very different and unique from the past how many seasons here's an opponent we got to beat them all right we beat them yay all right here's another opponent we got to beat them we beat them yay it's like no what about if it's your own people your own people that you trust in that now are basically conspiring against you yeah and especially Welcome if they're gonna the world yeah exactly and and you know if especially if they mix this in with another uh, mm-hmm. storyline like the commonwealth or you know the yeah. georgie people and stuff like I that i mean maybe it's a conflict that they have momentarily and they band together in light of a larger threat who knows? Yeah, well, I, I, it could be like one of those things where they try to have this thing with the Commonwealth and then the Whispers keep thwarting them or whatever mm-hmm. it is as they try to make more progress. Mm-hmm. And so it, maybe it's even up in the air who they are until several episodes in or a couple mm-hmm. episodes in and you don't no. know. Yeah. It, it kind of allows the narrative to, especially with this huge time jump that supposedly yeah. happens, it, it allows the kind of Maggie's original treach- treachery to kind of take its logical conclusion right to see how deep and how far it's gone without actually seeing it at first yeah or yeah. actually knowing it's them at first yeah so I don't know how they're going to paint and weave that storyline too if, if it is in fact going to be Maggie have some sort of involvement from Maggie so uh, wow I just yeah. yeah it's fun to think about at the end of the day it's going to come down to how they present it yep mm-hmm. it really is going to be like a, wait, a watch and wait sort of thing I, yeah. I almost like wonder if they shouldn't tap the guys that are doing Fear the Walking Dead right now to get involved because (sighs) what they've been doing with Fear is the way they've been weaving the story They've been doing mm. such a great job. Yeah, not only the time Take jumps, note. but the characters. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like, there's so much attention to detail. And I think that's kind of some of the things that have been missing with the Walking Dead episodes. Yeah, they've been complacent. I think that they've gotten comfortable. They've been doing this formula for the past, you know, eight years. Yeah. And, and I it's think not their fault. Again, the- No, no, no. It's, it's not their fault. And I think that now, with the death of Carl and everything, I think that now they're they're trying to kind of 
flex their muscles and say, nope, we're going to forge our own path. It's time to put our writing skills to use. Yeah, exactly. And cannot lean so much on the source material. Yeah. Use it as a reference guide for sure, but flex those, those muscles and write the story the way you see fit. Yeah. Yeah. Write it the way you would write it had you not seen it. <laughs> had yeah. you not known about it. Yeah. Oh yeah. We've read this comic book. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. <laughs> no, just basically read these lines from the, from panel, from this panel. Yeah. And, and here, here's the completely not different thing but like oh here's the thing that we're going to decide to do as a result let's mm-hmm. we're going to screw with your heads a little bit mm-hmm. and and not circle back and, yeah. and you know let's take some chances yeah, mm-hmm. and that's really what it's going to have to come down to yeah no exactly they're going to have to they're going to have to fuck with with comic readers heads again i know all the fanboys will be pissed but you know good it is good it is. we'll take them deal down with it. deal with it yeah that, this is where we stand on Squawking Dead. Mm-hmm. And this is where I guess we're going to probably leave you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a productive, uh, yeah. Productive, productive episode. Yeah. I'd say. I'd say. So with that, mm-hmm. everybody, we cannot wait for, for the next few days <laughs> for, the next, <laughs> for the next episode of Fear the Walking Dead. And, you know, I guess as uh, news from The Walking Dead comes out, we'll uh, keep you updated. Yeah. Uh, Walking Dead news as, they, as it pops up. As it and comes. rumors. <laughs> rumors, theories. Hmm. Maybe visuals, but we'll Maybe see. Maybe visuals. Yeah, exactly. There have been some images. Yep, yep. Little crew cut from uh, Rick. L- mm-hmm. l- looking a little older. Yeah, future, future Rick. Negan very much absent, so you know that they're probably keeping him uh, under wraps so that people don't start. Oh, it's old Oh, yeah, Negan. that's it's, right. Yeah, so they're probably not necessarily showing him very much, but I speculate that they are doing the chime jump, you know, and you'll see imprisoned old man Negan just because like, he's been seen with big bushy beard and all that. that <laughs> yeah. I got to imagine it's probably related. Yeah, it's like, here's what you got to do. You got to grow out the beard, Jeffrey just Dean. Grow it, just grow it out. JD. Yep. Can I call you yeah. JD? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're keeping me in this cage, literally, in this hotel. Uh, uh, yeah, they, Lenny James says that they would do that a lot with him. <laughs> yeah, poor guy. Yeah, we yeah. talked about that too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Man. So people off. So, as always, we'll see you then. See you next time. 